Hi, I'm Melo. I use he, they pronouns, and yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina Jensen. I am a middle school counselor here in Lander, Wyoming. My name's Nate Shoutis, and I am the library media specialist at Lander Valley High School. I'm Jenny Young. I am a special education teacher at Lander Middle School. Hi, I'm Willow Wells. I'm a junior at Lander Valley High School, and I use all pronouns. Every year is a little bit different, but in general, our LGBTQ kids do not feel safe in schools. Um, last year was a particularly violent year towards this demographic. Um, it, it was um, incredible, some of the things that were reported and were not followed up on, and uh, I think in general, um, the students are correct to not feel safe in schools it's not a safe environment for them. I've had slurs yelled at me from cars. Um, like there's just been a lot of like bad feelings directed towards me. And so honestly at school, I don't feel very safe. And I'm out like walking to my car. I gotten like barked at. I remember like just the other day, this guy drove past and like growled at me. And I'm just like, why? I don't understand. Okay. But yeah, generally speaking, like inside of the building, yes, but also, no. Like it's, there's kind of a difference between like that mental and physical safety, you know? But sometimes kids go for the jugular and they know what words are going to hurt the worst. Because sometimes you can feel physically safe, but you're being harassed. <laughs> Like, in the parking lot, I don't think anything serious is going to happen, but at the same time, like, what if, you know? And it's kind of just that what if that just hovers over you in your subconscious or whatever, and I think that's the main problem. So lots of things happened at the non-discrimination policy board meeting last May or April, I can't remember if it was May or April, but um, essentially the board voted to remove gender identity, sexual orientation, veteran status, um, and maybe one other protected class from the school district's non-discrimination policy. And it was really controversial uh, for a lot of reasons. The members who voted to remove it, some of them expressed that it was just a simple procedure to match the language of the district's policy with that of the state and said the state already has that, you know, the state has this language so we're just going to match this language to it. Uh, however, over 30 parents and teachers and community members and students showed up at the meeting and asked them to not remove that language, um, saying that that language was really important to students' well-being and feeling welcome in the district. What they ended up deciding was that they didn't need to have all of those uh, marginalized classes and communities listed because in their mind it didn't take away any of the protections. I remember like people were saying it doesn't have that big of an effect and like you know people will still get punished for bullying but I don't know it's just like there's a huge disconnect between that and it was just a really sad day and I had to go back to school and be like Ah. <laughs> uh, taking the wording out, the specific wording for those marginalized groups of people, it made them feel as though they are no longer protected. This one guy stood up and he started yelling um, because he, yeah, he kind of lost it. Um, I feel kind of bad for him, honestly, because he was talking about like his son who almost committed um, suicide last year due to discriminatory 
bullying. There needs to be public recognition from our district leadership that um, our LGBTQ students are harassed and are living under a constant low-grade radiation of homophobia and, um, and, and just damaging and constant um, vocalized hostilities towards them. Like here at LVHS, we have the Speak Club, and like that's an anti-bullying club, and I, I honestly think that that should be more widespread because that has helped a lot. And it's just overall like a great safe space as well to talk about your experiences. It's incredible and has been a, a really huge force for them to make friends and to find some stability in the school and to have recourse if something is going badly in their lives. Um, So I think it's super important. I'm gonna cry because every year I have several students who come and confide in me about the difficulties in their life. And it's tr tragic and heartbreaking. And without a club like this, they wouldn't have anywhere to go. And I think it's testament to the, like, the bigotry that exists in this state and in this country that we need something like this. Um, it's it is really, really hard for some students, particularly students who don't have supportive parents. Um, and so I think the, the club and its existence and the fact that it is protected by federal law and cannot be winked out of existence despite certain people trying is just super crucial to many students here. So I am obviously a strong believer in what the club does. Um, to push for change, people need to know that it's a really long, slow road and that there's an analogy that a woman I really respect named Sarah Burlingame from an organization called Wyoming Equality uses a lot and I really have used it myself and that's we're not flipping a switch, we're turning a dial. Um, I think district leadership needs to push back against bigotry in every way possible and instead of reacting to it, they need to get in front of it and try and build a healthy culture in their schools because right now it's really an unhealthy culture. I think starting a GSA research shows that it reduces the uh, amount of suicide ideation in those marginalized communities when there's at least just a GSA at the school. So that's a good place to start. Honestly, I think if people were more willing to just listen um, I think that would really help and uh, mostly like yeah really just listening and I mean not like threatening to out people or like you don't have to share that like you shouldn't share that if someone explicitly tells you not to as well. They're not the majority and so as long as you're in the minority you're gonna need support and you're gonna need support from the majority. Um, I am a strong believer that representation is one of the most important things that especially queer youth can have because like growing up personally I never saw like a queer character or a trans character in any media I was consuming. There is so many great like queer artists out there who write like comic books and graphic novels and just really fun stories that I've even like read a couple this year that I think would work perfect in our library. I think the best way we can make people care is by telling our stories, telling these hard awful stories. I think in some circles there just needs to be more awareness but I also think that there's tons of awareness um, it's just that it's not going anywhere because we're so polarized and people are so fixed in their mindsets and are unwilling to open their eyes and look at the problem and recognize this is a huge problem. I don't know if the people who bark and like call people slurs and all of that sort of stuff would just understand or hear one person's story. I feel like that would help. Just if they would, if everybody could just see each other as human beings, <laughs> that would be so helpful. <laughs> um, 
I'm leaving the school district and if I was not leaving, this would be a very risky thing to say to somebody, to accuse this, our school board or our administrations of suppressing LGBTQ voices and thoughts and open dialogue in a free society. Um, but, I, but I am leaving and I don't care. Uh, my job's not on the line in the same way. And so I think you're gonna find there's many teachers here who feel like they cannot speak up right now for fear of recrimination against their jobs. And it has certainly affected me and is, I'm not afraid to speak out anymore because I'm leaving already. Um, and, and yeah, I feel like it needs to be said.